the planet, tee them up. Hang us here. Uh -huh. Because I'm gonna let uh -huh. you know, if you're in the uh -huh. water, you're gonna die. Illuminati dies here today, mom. Boop, 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 boop. It's a shark in the zoo. They say in Babylon, put the mark on him too. Okay. This whole body lights so we can maul other guys. If my RC and I go and talk on me too. Uh huh. And them coffers for you. I'm ready, so the devil who I call out first. What? I heard God call it, said behind the great wall. He had made a sword all to kick them all off earth. Hey, so my click don't play. Heaven gotta choose the wolf or the lamb. Get shot down by a pig in the street. Why do niggas gotta be from this a whole lot of hell? All right, it's a hole in the dam. They can't flood Merc, so they shoot down gangs. Merc fly high, baby, Merc won't die. I don't see nobody here that can shoot down planes. All right. You running out of tank, oh, screaming dry bitch, why you running out the bank? Cause my click don't pay, I'm probably in your range getting brain with the semi My hoe act right like she came with an Emmy She want black pipe cause she came with the Remy huh? Ain't no pain even in me You probably wouldn't know where I blow back cause It's five knockouts when it's five cops out Oh, it's five shots out from the big bad wolf Better bitch gon' say Then my click don't play I do a clip in the cave, but I'm probably in your range getting brain with the semi Probably in your range getting brain with the semi. Better bitch gon' say. This is the only way I know the handle this. I know the handle this. A whole lot of guns and a whole lot of cannons. Shots fired at Screw too, but shots out to you, Carbon Babies. This is your melanated warrior, Havu Heinous. And this is another installment of Facts Over Feelings. Leave your feelings at the door so we can get to the facts. Because the facts are the only things that matter. I know, yeah, y'all, it's, it's stuff is kind of crazy. I'm going to wait for some people to get in here. If y'all can redirect them to this channel, um, we're going to try to make this happen. Yeah, YouTube put a strike on, you know, they. I think they, well, they gave me a warning. <laughs> <laughs> they said, look, nigga, that's too controversial. You talk about somebody you plague, that's too controversial. That's too controversial. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wait just a second to see, you know, if a few people can get into the chat. I know it's late, man. We're, we're, we're you know, this is not even fashionably late. This is just ridiculous. This is, this is not even right. You know what I'm saying? So, hold on one second. Uh, let me see if I can get, I can wait. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I hope he like tighten up, Nick. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Listen, but they had they wouldn't let me stream. They restricted me. They wouldn't let me stream because of the title. They wouldn't let me stream. What's up, Mia? They wouldn't let me stream because of the title. I'm just gonna wait a little second for y'all to get in here. You know what I'm saying? But they they just wouldn't let me stream. So, uh, hold on. Let me see. Let me see something. Yeah, what's up, people? Yeah, they, you know you climbing up in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all climb on up, um, up in here for a second. Because we got some powerful information. Yeah, they they was hating on your boy. They was hating on your boy. Let's see. Let's see something right quick. Make sure. Because I know fam was, he was ready to. Let's see right quick. Uh... All right. Yeah, because we got, look, look, we finna be on point tonight. Like this, this. This is finna be profound, you know. This is exact. This this is definitely be, this is definitely finna be an awesome live, you know. It, it was definitely worth the wait. So sorry, you guys. I know it's late, but uh, this information definitely has to get out. And then obviously, if you can't if you can't catch it at this moment in time, definitely try to catch it on the replay. I'm be you know obviously checking the chat because I don't have any I don't have any uh moderators at the moment. My best believe I will block your ass if you're talking crazy. <laughs> so you ain't even got to worry about that. You're not even got to worry about that. So let's get right into it because we are late and uh, we definitely want to just, you know, get into it and, and get this cracking because we got a ton of information, of wealth information to cover. And this is just going to be extremely important. Um, so recently, I'm talking about real recent, I'm, as in the matter of just a couple of hours or so ago, 
um, you know, I was preparing because I earlier today I went and saw the movie Killers of the Flower Moon. And this is why I was doing this. This is what inspired this live. Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't know if you guys had opportunity to see this movie, but it's an absolutely amazing movie. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, the, the most profound thing about the movie, and, and I'm not going to, you know, do any spoilers. I haven't, you know, tell you guys something that, that happened that, you know, that, that'll spoil the movie. But ultimately what we're dealing with, we're dealing with, uh, you know, we know. Uh, we call them Blancos, but just we say the mentality because you're buying into a mentality. Blanco definition to me is those who buy into the concept of the artificial matrix or AI being greater than natural intelligence because you have a Blanco mentality. We say that all the time with a lot of our brothers and sisters They that we call them Oreos. You know, when you when you actually have um, put yourself in a position where you say that I'm giving up on Mother Earth. I, you know, I want all of the, the fixings. I want everything that distracts everybody. I want all of that. I'm, uh, you know, so people in our community too suffer from that complex just as much as those who we consider to be or who we've made to become gods. Now, the thing is, the movie, the reason why it was so profound is because of what they do, which is they're exceptional at deflection. They're exceptional at making sure that they never tell you the truth, right? The complete truth. You got to figure a lot of this stuff out by yourself. But, it all centered back, it all goes back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, and that's one of the things that I thought was so profound. And I thought for one split second while I was watching the movie, I was like, I don't think they're going to mention Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they did. They did in one powerful scene, too. And it was it was powerful. So basically, to get the gist of it, the storyline is, you know, you had Europeans flood over to Oklahoma, flood to Oklahoma when they discovered that it was oil. It was this black gold rush. For the most part. And what the Blancos were doing, Blanco men were doing was taking advantage of the women, marrying into the tribes, supposedly. And and I'm and I'm explaining why it was so easy for them to be able to do that. Okay? They married into the tribes and you know, plain and simple, just to marry the women so that they can kill them off, so that they can take their 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 money, right? Their oil money. So it was it was crazy how it was all going down because you get lost and obviously you get lost in the characters and, 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 and the crazy part about it is they, they just had this blind trust to these, you know, to these European men, this blind trust. I mean, you already seen that there was already a pattern where people were dying and, 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 and coming up, you know, and under very questionable circumstances, but yet these women would still readily marry these men. Now, the illusion that the movie gives, which we got to tackle, which obviously isn't in the movie, but these are the things that you know once you tackle history. The illusion that we have to tackle is this, is that they made it seem or appear like this was the first time Blancos came into the, the contact with these Indians when they re reached up to Oklahoma. We know this is dip. We know that that's very untrue because we know the history. We know that Blancos or the Europeans were coming in contact with the so-called Native Americans or the Indians in the 15th and 16th centuries. The 15th and 16th centuries, they were intermingling. They were intermarrying. We know the story about Pocahontas. So we got to let the Blanco know we own your ass. We're not going to let you do that. We're not going to let you do that and act like you done made a movie and it was your first time coming into contact with these Indians who just newly discovered oil on their land. Now, if you know about anything about the five civilized tribes, the five civilized tribes, and I wrote them down just to make sure I didn't forget them, was Cherokee, Chickasaw, Creek, Choctaw, and Seminole. Now, let's not argue about the names. We know the Blanco has been naming everything, so we can't get caught up into that. But one thing is interesting, you take a look at the word or the, uh, the name Seminole. Seminole means runaway. That's even in the Encyclopedia, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica under Black Seminoles. Seminole meant runaway. All right, so how could a runaway be a tribe? We don't know, but we'll just, you know, let them get away with that. But the point is, is that when you take a look at these five tribes, notice the, term, notice the title that they gave them, the civilized tribe. First thing that should pop in your head, especially when you know the true definition of Seminole, how could a runaway be civilized? That's the whole point that they ran away. That's... that's they're disobeying or they're, they're uncivilized in your eyes and, and they're actually uh, uh, someone who can't be controlled and that's rebellious because they ran away. So it just goes to show you what they mean is that over time they had conditioned these individuals through, uh, you, you know, through, uh, you know, indoctrinating them with their religion, conditioning them with their education, you know, and, and, and surrounding them with their hospital and their foods over, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, 50 years or 100 years or so, they have become civilized. Or they had assimilated into European culture. And the way that they had did that, and the only way that you can do that, is if you lighten up your skin. Because what you see in the movie is this idea being propagated by these characters as if they're just these, 
you know, they had this chasm in terms of color shades. Like, it's even one character uh, in the movie when they were sitting down at the table and he was looking at the kids and he was like, he, the children, he was like, oh, they're dark. Look how dark that one is versus the other one. And they damn near were indistinguishable in terms of, in, in terms of skin color. But this is what you have. This is what's so deep. So I'm like, man, if they think that child is dark, I would, they must think I'm jet black. <laughs> it was just ridiculous stuff, right? But, okay, so let's let's get into what, you know, the, the, the biggest part, the meat of it. Um, One of the things that you got to understand is the, the, the they're called the uh, Osage, right? It's called, the name of the movie is Killers of the Flower Moon. Now, the Flower Moon is what you know and they start writing this down in the farmer's almanac at around 1930 they got that description from the indians or the native americans the native americans or the indians at the time would call the full moon right uh in may yeah yeah i believe it's in the month of may they would call that full moon the flower moon because then you see spring approaching that's when you see all of the flowers so that's the point of that title so the name of the movie is called killers of the flower moon now what you have to understand is especially when you learn about the proximity in terms of how close the Osage County was to Tulsa. They were 20 miles apart. They were 20 miles apart. Okay. Now this is the big thing. We're going to go take a look at, a, a um, you know, uh, an article from the Oklahoma historical society on the Osage, right on the Osage. So just give me one second. And I know old hate this. He like, you got to look, listen, I just came from the movies and I decided to do this. So, Y'all definitely got to, you know, uh, bear with me on this one because, man, I, all of this stuff is powerful. All this stuff is powerful. And trust me. Trust me, I'm, you know, it's not going to be any problem bringing it up. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be any problem bringing it up. Okay. Now, um, when it says trust and betrayal in Osage County, uh, Osage Country. All right, now I'm going to share my screen, and then we're going to get into it. When you watch the movie, the movie's going to make it out to be like, oh, they were the wealthiest and the richest people on the planet. They were the wealthiest and the richest people on the planet. Nothing could be further from the truth. They were not. And, and you got to understand, too, when you do, when you look into your research, they'll let you know that they were sold that land. They were sold that land by the uh, by, by the Creek Nation. Right. The Creek Nation was a confederate of tribes, different tribes and different Indians and stuff of that Creek Nation. They, they lump in some Seminoles oftentimes. Right. So the Seminoles, we know, were kicked out of Florida. We have to know about the, the longest war in American history, which was the Gullah Wars. I believe it's somewhere between 1739 and 1858. The longest and most expensive war in Europe and in, in United States history that they obviously choose to ignore and not talk about. So the Seminoles were kicked out and a lot of them still refused to leave. Right. But the vast majority of them went on the Trail of Tears with other Indians. They settled in Oklahoma. These Creek Indians end up selling land to the Osage, right? The Osage Indians end up buying land. And then obviously, you know, that they, they, they were uh, interacting with one another because they, they bought land and settled 20 miles away from Tulsa. They bought land and settled. And mind you, when the, 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 the killings had occurred, they occurred at the same time as the Tulsa massacre. This is deep. 
It occurred at the same time during, the, and I got the articles too. So we, you, I'm just leading it up because I want y'all to see some of these very powerful articles and information. So it happened at the same time as the Tulsa massacres, right? Now, we're going to pull up an article to show you that the movie misleads you because they're like, oh, they were the wealthiest Indians. They were the wealthiest people on the planet. But if they were wealthy because of oil, you have to know how could that be the case? Because Tulsa, Oklahoma was considered oil capital of the world. So if oil was how they got their riches and Tulsa was the oil capital of the world, we know somebody lying. But see, you don't want uh, uh, black people to know that just like they were doing in Osage County, white folks in this movie, because it's based off historical events, white folks in this movie were the, the butlers and the maids driving cabs, serving these Indians, just like they were doing for black folks in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just like they were doing for black folks in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to go right to this article too. Hold on for a second. Let's let's get to it. Good sound too. So not pre appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, somebody said no sound. Hold on. Do we got sound? Do we have sound? Hold on. We better have sound. We didn't have no sound. Hold. Good sound too. So not appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, somebody said no sound. Hold on. Do we got sound? Oh my goodness. Hold on. We better have sound. All right. Can ones in the chat if you guys can hear me. This is disastrous. They got me starting an hour late. Then they already had it on. Okay. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. We good? All right. Can you in the chat if you guys can hear me? Okay. So you guys didn't hear. I basically was <laughs> I basically was talking for 20 minutes and you guys couldn't hear me basically, right? Is that what's going on? I'm going to wait. I want to hear that. I'm going to wait. We good? Was I talking for all this time and nobody could hear me? Okay. So you guys didn't hear. I basically was... <laughs> I basically was talking for 20 minutes and you guys didn't hear me basically, right? Is that what's going on? All right, but did you guys did you guys hear much of what I was talking about? All this time and nobody could hear me. So nobody heard me. I'm going to wait cuz obviously you know it's a delay. All right, but did you guys did you guys hear much of what I was talking about? So nobody heard me. All right, so let's just recap just a little bit. The movie, obviously, we're talking about Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, no, it was when you showed the article. When I showed the article, that's when, okay, we missed the article part. It's it, it's a delay. Uh, sound went out briefly. All right, so okay, all right, we're going to recap just right quick. All right. Now, this is the thing that we were talking about. We were talking about Killers of the Flower Moon, right? And the, in the, it's based on the book. Flower Moon means... Hold on one okay. second. I'm getting right, an echo. Recap just right quick. All right. I'm getting an echo. Now, this is the thing that we were talking about. We were I'm getting an echo. Killers of the Flower Moon, right? And the, and the, and based on the book, Yo. Flower Moon means... Now, I want to make sure... I want to make sure. Yeah, I just have to cut that off. Now, Um, because I'll look here. I'll look here. I'm trying to get rid of my echo, you guys. Man, this is, you know, let's, you know, this is, I, I hate that. I want to make sure. I hate that. But let's get it. Let's get it. Because we got some powerful information, man. We're not going to allow this to stop nobody right now. We can't allow this to stop. We can't allow this to stop. All right. Now, the thing is, this is what, this is what's going on. All right. When it comes to, when it comes to the movie, um, you know, the movie is called Killers of the Flower Moon. Obviously, if you look at this concept was really promoted by what was called the farm. Everybody's familiar with the farm, Farmer's Almanac. Farmer's Almanac got that term from Indians. Indians use the, um, the, the Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean, the, the Flower Moon to indicate that that was when that was the first full moon, you know, in May. Uh, you know, to you know, to give them the idea that this is when the spring was coming or approaching. That's that's why it's called Flower Moon, because they would see a, a, a lot of flowers. OK, and. Um, you know, so we've already established too that the Osages, who these individuals were, they were uh, a lot of, you know, the Indi indigenous or Native Americans, uh, you know, amongst many other tribes that were pushed out due to the Indian Removal Act, due to the Indian Removal Act of 1830. OK, so they end up settling in Oklahoma. That land was sold to them by what they call the Creek Indians. The Creek Indians were a conglomerate or a confederate of tribes. You know, a lot of times they pack the Seminoles into that. Seminole means runaway. So how can a runaway be a part of a tribe, especially even part of what they call the civilized tribe? They had something called the five civilized tribes. I read them off to you. The five civilized tribes were the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Creek, the Choctaw and the Seminole. All right. So now. In 1874, 
They established, uh, I think a little bit before that, but it was called the Bureau of Indian Affairs. They handled all of these things, right? Because once they discovered that it was oil in Oklahoma, then you had these, uh, you know, these European settlers now raiding Oklahoma to get a part of the wealth. Now, what was going on, what the movie kind of alludes to, but it doesn't really clarify, is that these oil tycoons were leasing the land and giving royalties to these Indians, right? Now, this is another thing. Now that we know that the, the Seminoles and all of those individuals who come from Florida, which had black blood in them, uh, you know, went off into, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, they end up selling land to the Osage Indians, selling land to them. And that's why they were close in proximity to one another, being 20 miles away from Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is deep because this is going to set the stage for all of this. 20 miles away remind you these massacres started occurring at the same time the massacre of Tulsa Oklahoma is around 1920 1921 these massacres occurred around the same time okay also this movie leads you to believe that they were they were the richest people on earth and how did they accumulate this wealth and get this wealth through the royalties that they were getting from the oil right in this movie they show you that these white folks who came to Tulsa uh, who came to Osage County they were sitting up there working for these Indians right they were the butlers they were the maids they were the cab drivers they were the janitors they were basically low on the totem pole in terms of if it was if it was anything such as class they were the lowest on the totem pole. Now, this is one of the reasons why they can't let you know this about Tulsa, Oklahoma, because you bet to believe when they interacted with our people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they were the butlers. They were the maids. They were the cab drivers. They were the janitors. Why our people were living at the top of their game. OK, this is important. Now, we talked about in Oklahoma, uh, I read a little bit from the Oklahoma Historical Society, uh, that, that article that I pulled up. It talked about the guy who wrote the book. It obviously uh, also mentioned that that was also the birth or around the time of the birth of the FBI. This was the FBI's first case. OK, this was the FBI's first case investigating these murders. But we're going to show you that, you know, this Blanco don't ever do nothing out of the kindness of his heart. All right. That's one thing that you got to know. They bring plagues because the movie gets real interesting and it connects with all of the information that I've been giving you guys in the last few videos that I posted to YouTube. All right. So. We're going to go off into something because, remember, what we're going to do is dispel some myths. When you look at these movies, they know the power of iconography. Like I said before, they wanted us to get the impression that these Indians, Native Americans, or the indigenous were damn near white, damn near bright. Nothing could be further from the truth. Later on, maybe that was the case because they lead you to believe that when these Europeans got to Oklahoma, when they got to Oklahoma and Osage County and got to Tulsa and stuff, they were interacting with Indians who weren't already conditioned. They were already eating the Blanco's food. They were already indoctrinating their kids in the Blanco schools. Most of them were already Christian. This is important because this gets you to understand. You're like, dang, they come in there. They're purposely marrying the women and they're killing them. Even they're also killing the children so that they're killing their own children that they're reproducing with these individuals just to make sure not all of them, but some of them just to make sure that they got the inheritance, just to make sure that they got the oil money. All right. And this movie starts off telling you literally and mind you it's telling you martin uh scorsese the one who directed it is the one you see right before the movie starts and he's talking about how we, we tried to make make sure that we you know uh got this movie down to the t and we consulted the osage and the elders and all this different stuff to make sure that we you know showed you these events as closely to the truth as we possibly could but nothing could be further from the truth because they start off letting you believe that these people were the richest people on earth and as i said if they accumulated their resources from oil how come Tulsa and black people wasn't seen as the richest people on the earth, considering the fact that Tulsa, Oklahoma was the oil capital of the world? We're about to bring this up. We're about to bring this up right now. We're about to bring this up. Because you must, this is something that you must know. All right. Okay, where is my notes? My notes. Okay. All right, hold on one second, brothers and sisters. Yeah, because this is deep. This is deep right here. And this was written by, the, you know, Petroleum Pioneer. So. Say, me and Lynn said I heard you the whole time. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, it says she's seen the movie is insane. Oh, yeah, the movie is insane. The movie is insane. So, hold on. Let me pull up this article. Because y'all about to see. Y'all about to see exactly. Oh, this is going to be so deep. This is so deep. So, now, let me share my screen, you guys. Can you okay? So you guys can hear me now, right? You guys can hear me now. Say so as soon as I start reading. Let's see, one second. I'm watching the chat. Um, let me see. All right. My goodness. My goodness. This is crazy. Hold on, right quick. I'm going to try this. Okay, just got in, but we in here. All right, what's up? Chris Pasta, we in here. All right. I know it's ones. I know you guys could probably hear me now at this moment in time. So what I'm going to do, obviously, I'm, I'm going to share my... your boy they messing with your boy it's supposed to be it's supposed to be sound they messing with your boy so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just i'm gonna just read it from right here uh um, i'm gonna just read it from right here won't be able to share the article with you guys uh so you can see it but um i'm giving you the, the resource 
So, so matter of fact, before I even start talking, can you guys hear me now? No, you guys can hear me now, though, right? Correct. All right. So when you got that screen, the sound goes off. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. Okay. So. I'm thinking everything is all good now because I'm just going to read the source. All right. So you guys can hear me. All right. So we'll go on now. OK, this this. Um, this article, this article was from uh, making Tulsa oil capital of the world, petroleum pioneers making Tulsa the oil capital of the world. All right. So let's read. Among the great Oklahoma oil field discoveries, the 1905 Glen Pool helped Sinclair, Getty, and others get started. Greater than even the 1901 Spindletop discovery in Texas, Oklahoma Territory's Glen Pool field produced a light and sweet oil from the Creek Indian Reservation. It would help make Tulsa the oil capital of the world. On a chilly fall morning in 1905, two years before Oklahoma became a state, oil was discovered on the Glen family farm south of Tulsa. The well launched a drilling boom that greatly exceeded the first Oklahoma oil well of 1897 at Bartlesville. Hundreds of wells were soon producing so much oil that the entire region was soon called the Glenpool or Glenpool, now in the Tulsa suburb Glenpool. I don't know why they did that twice because they just, oh, because they said Glenpool twice because Glen is spelled with one N on one and then two N's on another. I don't even know why they should think that that's a, a big thing. But uh, there's an article they're, they're showing the illustration. It says Tulsa, Oklahoma, the oil capital of the world. It says underneath that illustration, by 1920, Tulsa is home to 400 petroleum companies, two daily newspapers, seven banks, four telegraph companies, and 10,000 telephones. Let me read that again. By 1920, Tulsa is home to 400 petroleum companies, two daily newspapers, seven banks, Four telegraph companies and 10,000 telephones. Now, you got to understand, it's at, this is, we had modernized, this was America being modernized right in this city where black people live. This is how important this is. Now, remember what I told you, seven banks. If you, when you watch that movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, one thing that you're going to see that's very disturbing, which they don't really go into. When the Indians go, the, when the Indians go to the bank, they have no control over their money. They need someone called Guardians. Who, who are mostly white men, right? These guardians tell them when and how and how much money they can spend. You see what I'm saying? And if they could even get the money or have access to the money. So when she goes in there, her name is Molly. When Molly goes in there, Molly has to say her name. Then she has to say that she's incompetent. She has to admit that she's incompetent and she ha does have no control. Uh, she's not competent enough for you know to spend her money. So they have to control it and parcel it out to her if they even give her the money right this is critical so as you see the banks were there specifically to make sure that they controlled the money this is something you couldn't do in tulsa you know you know you know black people ain't taking that shit you see in our banks we controlled the banks you see what no blancos telling us how to spend our money you see what i'm saying but this goes to show you they know that they were dealing with the seminoles remember the black seminoles especially articulated in the encyclopedia britannica let you know that they were the fiercest warriors in the seminole wars and stuff but we already know this we know that that it just was black people we're not gonna argue this we're gonna stick to what the blanco saying with their narrative but still be able to dissect and break apart what he's saying just by making it all make sense right so let's continue to keep going down in this article very powerful stuff the November 22nd, 1905 Glenpool oil field discovery made headlines worldwide, attracting established exploration companies, new venturers, and a host of service companies with daily production soon exceeding 120,000 barrels of oil. The field exceeded Tulsa's country's earlier giant, the Red Fort Gusher, and even the incredibly prolific Spindletop Hill discovery near Beaumont, Texas, four years earlier. OK, so we know who these exploration companies were. We know Rockefeller, Rockefeller Oil was one of the biggest ones. So you got to understand this around the 1920s. They knew that they had to take action. Remember, the massacres in Osage County in Tulsa took place at the same time. At the same time. 
But see how they do it because one, they want to make sure that they control the iconography. They one wanted to have you associate the indigenous with these people who are white and damn uh, bright and damn near white, right? And then when they talk about Tulsa, Oklahoma, they want you to act like you see or perceive Tulsa, Oklahoma's destabilization as a race riot, right? Like some black dude, a young black man was in an elevator with a white woman and talked crazy to her and tried to assault her. And then that's what caused the riots. And oh, they had doctors and lawyers and dentists and stuff. Yeah, it was a town where black people were successful, but they don't mention nothing about oil. They don't mention nothing about oil. All right. And yeah, like what did the sister say? She said, we should be able to sue them motherfuckers. Yeah, we should be able to sue them for that damn movie. Telling them damn lies. Right? And you'll notice in the movie, because I know sis seen the movie, when it's a, it's a scene where there's an explosion. They blew up one of the... They, the Leonardo DiCaprio character, matter of fact, the one thing I can do is bring up the photograph so you can see the actual women, right? And they look rough. I mean, you know... They, they, I mean, I don't know. I would have been, it would have been one of them situations where you take a one for the team because man, but anyways, I digress. I ain't trying to, you know, make, <laughs> but what happened was there was an explosion. And when she ran out there, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character is her husband. He plays her husband and the Indian woman who's one of the main characters, obviously she's the wife of, of Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. <clears throat> and She's when they're running down the house. I cannot bullshit. I bullshit you not. She says, it's just like Tulsa. It's just like Tulsa. She repeats it twice. And, you know, these Blancos had to tell us the truth because it's just the way that they tell it. Right. That they're going to compartmentalize it and obviously gloss it up and stuff. But she was like, it's just like Tulsa. All right. Now, what's so incredible about this? The meat of this is, is that how they were killing these Indians besides outright murder was through diabetes and mind you when diabetes first came out they were like they, they treated it like AIDS they was like oh uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character was like oh you know my wife has that diabetes right so when the Blanco came to these Indian women or the indigenous they were feeding them their food and they were dropping like flies from diabetes the main character who plays the wife of um one of the main characters who plays the wife of Leonardo DiCaprio she had died eventually from diabetes Okay, so did her grandmother. I hate to do spoiler alerts, but you should see it just because it's that powerful. You're going to take out some things that I maybe didn't see. But trust me, all of the hidden, the hidden gems, I was on it. I was on, I was on the iconography and I was on everything. So we just talked about sugars. This is why this is so important. And it's a scene in the movie where the doctor tells her, he said, you're going to get your leg and your foot cut off. You can't eat like white people. This is what he tells her. Now, mind you, they got it down to such a science to the point where they can consume their alcohol, which we already told you how alcohol is made. Alcohol is made by fermented sugar. We let you know that it's uh, two type of alcohols that they use. I mean, two type of yeast that they use to make alcohol. And these yeasts, uh, you know, basically feed off the sugar and how much sugar they feed off will determine the potency of that beer. Right now. If there's sugar left over, that means that that has that's considered a light beer. If it's more sugar left over, there's less alcohol. If there's more alcohol made, then there's less sugar left over. Right. It's a science to this. OK, so we know that beer contains a lot of sugar. We, we've already went over this in the previous uh, video. We told you that if you drunk a beer that had 96 calories, it has about 24 grams of sugar in it. So it's sugar water. So they brought the sugar water and it's a very powerful scene where one of the Blanco men with his Indian wife was like, oh, are you hungry? Are you, you don't feel good? Here, eat this. And he offered her some cake. They knew this is the point. This is why this is so deep because they also exposed the Masons in the movie. Oh, it's going to get deep. They literally go into the Masonic lodges and all this. This is why if you have not seen this movie, you definitely need to see this movie. You definitely need to see this movie. All right. Now. Let's go sidebar for a second. This was so powerful about us. And me and me and Ob was just talking about this. But what's so powerful about all this is you got to understand their language is, is about rituals. You know, it's rituals steeped in their language, right? We, we, we participate in rituals when we deal with their language. Do you know, and a lot of people, you know, me and Ob, like I said, was talking about this. 20 over 25 states still have their Indian names. And we talking about, we, you know, I'm from Michigan. So like I said, Michigan, even in of itself is a, is a, is an Indian name, Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, 
Arkansas, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, North Dakota, South Dakota. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? Chicago, these cities, they're all Indian names. You know, um, obviously in Michigan, you got Pontiac, you got Kalamazoo, uh, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Dwajak, all these Indian names. So this is what you got to understand. Think about how deep this is. These Blancos took over this land, but didn't rename it. But didn't rename it. They still got these. They still perform these rituals. And we're going to get into how deep this is. So keep that in mind. I'm just setting the stage for this. Because this is deep. They still working through these names because you get a lot of power in the name. Therefore, like you said, you see with the gods. Mind you, when they took over the gods, when they took over the gods that you that you worship, Jesus and all that, they made sure to change the name. They didn't stay, They didn't keep Heru, right? They made sure to change the names. So, but when it comes to this land and they see so much energy in it, they know that they have to continuously perform these rituals through these spells. And a big part of spells, obviously, is the language. That's how you evoke energy. You know, when you see magicians and all that different stuff, they say words. They say that the earth was started by the um sound. It's about sounds, okay? In order to get that energy. We told you that they're not only vampires in terms of the blood, but they're emotional and energy vampires. On top of that, all right, check. Okay, now, um, what was also interesting because I took some notes. What was also interesting, uh, you know, in that movie was when the Indian guy had stated he said that um he said you know when they had this meeting they were in this you know the elders were meeting, and then the Indian guy had nerve to say said you know I participated in the Boxers Rebellion. Woo, this was so man. I was like, oh my goodness, this is so deep. The Boxers Rebellion was a rebellion by the Chinese, all right, between 1898 and 1901. So I'm sitting here just in this movie, stunned, right? Because you helped the Blanco go sit up there and undermine the Chinese to, 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 to take over, to, 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 to basically disintegrate the Qing Dynasty? Because you must remember, remember, at this time, when they collapsed the Qing Dynasty, the British took out a lease out on China and from 1898 to 1997, that is a 99 year lease. The British ruled China after they demolished the Qing dynasty. And one of the rebellions was called the Boxers Rebellion because the Chinese basically were fighting the, you know, uh, what was anti-foreign, anti-colonialism. You know, it was, it, it, they were just against colonialism. They were against the foreigners and they were definitely against Christianity. So that one was called the Boxers Rebellion. And the reason why it was called the Boxers Rebellion was because Chinese martial arts were interpreted by the Westerners as Chinese boxing. So they called it the Boxers Rebellion. But you had the Japanese, you had the Germans, you had the Russians, you had all of these, you know, these European nations come in and fight together to open up Chinese ports and to demolish the Qing dynasty and their sovereignty and do the same thing that they were doing to them as they were doing all across the globe at the same time time so what's my point that i'm trying to uh, relate to you guys is that these people this was a con this was a uh uh you know an assault that was coordinated that was coordinated the timing and everything was crucial for these europeans the timing and everything was crucial for these europeans if you backtrack just a few years or a decade before the boxers rebellion and before a lot of these incidents here in america you have the 1884 1885 berlin conference where they're coming together to split up africa so they got a conference in 1884 1885 splitting up the uh, you, you know uh, uh you know africa for themselves they're over there in asia you know obviously in east asia deep east asia and and they're taking down the Qing dynasty then they're over here in the americas all right, moving the Indians off their land by the Indian Removal Act in 1830. Oh, they clicking like clockwork. It's clicking like clockwork. Boy, this is, listen, this is, I mean, come on now. All right, so I want to show you just, just as what, just as much on, um, all right, so did we cover that note? We got those notes, right? All right. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to this article. This is going to be powerful. This is going to be powerful, brothers and sisters. And I'm going to show you how deep the rituals go. I'm going to show you how deep the rituals go. Let's 
show you how deep the rituals go. Okay, hold on. All right. So I'm gonna just well I'm gonna do obviously since you guys can't hear me when I try I'm just gonna show you the article too. I want I want you guys to see the article. I want you guys to see the article. All right. Okay, so I wanted to let you guys, I wanted you to know what I was looking at, okay? Now, we're going to read, now, you know that this Blanco is, you know, is, 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 going so, is going somewhere with this because he said, the title is literally, How Native Americans Lost, Lost, Lost Their Land as Indian Territory Was Carved Up. So they must have lost it because he put lost three times, like y'all lost that. Now, when you go down here, it's like, um, um, it says this 1892 map depicts the Oklahoma and Indian territories not long after the famous Oklahoma land rush that started April 22nd, 1889 and eventually brought 50,000 white settlers into the area. A significant development in the establishment of the state of Oklahoma. Settlers who had slipped over the border before the rush's official start date to claim land were called Sooners. Pause. Why did I say that? Me and Old talked about this. You part, when you watch college football, do you notice that some of the names are Indian names? They did this with a lot of the uh, so-called professional uh, sports teams and tried to change up the names, obviously, because some people, uh, you know, felt that that was, uh, you know, blatantly disrespectful. But the Oklahoma Sooners college team is named after the people who came there and raided the lands. Did you know that? Come on, man. Come on. I'm finna. Uh, listen. Listen. I I'm trying to see who. I'm trying to see if y'all really feeling that in the chat right right there. Do you know that that college team is called the Sooners and the Sooners stand for people who went and claimed land? And then you see this poster right here says Grand Rush for the Indian Territory. Over 15 million acres land now open for settlement. Now is the chance to procure a home in this beautiful country. The finest timber, the richest land, the finest water west of the Mississippi River. Okay? So that's what you have to understand about that. So you've seen, you know, so when we talk about this, we talk about these rituals. These rituals are extremely important to them because even when you take a look at, even when you take a look at, um, um, you know, the other college teams, like college teams like Kansas and Missouri. Okay, I'm finna show you. I'm finna show you a picture right quick. I'm finna show you a picture, a uh, image rather. Okay, you're not gonna be able to hear me, but I'm finna share this. Okay, what that was was a photo of Kansas, the Kansas City Jayhawks, and the Missouri Tigers. Okay, if you know anything about them college teams, they are. Uh, you know, they, they have a rivalry, right? But do you know what Kansas Jayhawks were? Jayhawks stood for the individuals who did guerrilla warfare on Missouri during the Civil War because Missouri was a slave state. And I guess Missouri was beefing with Kansas because before Kansas entered the Union, they wanted they were disputing on whether or not uh, Kansas should be a slave state or a free state. Right. But we know it's deeper than that. We know that really wasn't the case. But this is what the so-called war was over. So the individuals who, who 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 implemented guerrilla war tactics over in Missouri, they were called Jayhawks. It was called Jayhawking. OK, now it just to prove my point to show you that they do this with their rituals. I have a quote. I have a quote. A University of Missouri professor stated in 1910 that the annual football game is but a continuation of the border warfare of 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 the um of the wars back then that's what he said it was literally a continuation of the border warfare of the wars back then and if you notice that photo let me give it to you again and i'll say it before i actually you know transfer this uh, you know uh, uh switch over to the screen it's literally called the border war these are these college teams So you see the rituals we see ourselves involved in and we think that we, you know, and this is how they, 
Like, for instance, I'm going to tell you this, even in Detroit. You see here in Michigan, Detroit's doing pretty well as a football team. Do you know that Henry, Henry Ford's oldest son purchased the Lions because Henry Ford was awarded a, a, a medal by Hitler himself? Hitler looked up to Henry Ford. Hitler looked up to Henry Ford. Hitler, uh, Henry Ford was distributing, uh, 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 you know, a, a magazine here in the United States and abroad talking about how, how, how uh, devilish the Jew was, how the Jew needed to be exterminated. This is Henry Ford. This is Henry Ford. He hated Jews and Catholics, but we know, like we know about the name. So let's not get too deep. Let's look at the surface level stuff. This is what, this is the history. He hated Jews and Catholics. And do you know that his oldest son purchased the Detroit Lions on the day that Kennedy was assassinated because Kennedy was a Catholic president, first Catholic president. He purchased the Detroit Lions on November 22nd, 1963. Listen, listen, all of this stuff is rituals. And if you notice, they will never intend for the Lions to win because the team, the people who purchased the team, remember, the big symbol of the Jews is the Lion of Judah. I think I think I'm killing you niggas. I am killing you niggas right now. The symbol for the Jews is the lion of Judah. Judah was 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 Jacob's fourth son. And he described him as a lion. That's how they took on this, you know, I'm just telling you what, you know, what the book of Genesis has said and all this different stuff, right? And also I think it's quoted in the book of Revelation. But the point being is that the lion is their symbol. Right. We also know how uh, Hasi Selassie, uh, Hali Selassie and uh, the Ethiopian Empire had had the lion as a symbol, too, as well, because they claim that they were direct descendants from King Solomon. Right. King and, 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 and Queen Sheba. OK, so that's how that all came about. But you have to understand this is extremely important. They know about symbols. Right. So all of these these things that they do that I'm telling you, the lions will never win because it's important for them to get bad energy on their symbols. This is all about symbol warfare. But symbols. remember, like I told you what Joseph Campbell said, the world is ruled by signs and symbols. And most people are symbol illiterate. We already know we talked about the Seminoles. What team has has, has taken up that Florida college team, Florida Seminoles, Florida runaways, Florida runaway slaves. This shit is deep. All right. So we got that, man. This, like I said, man, this stuff is fire. You got to know these things. This stuff is, this stuff is real deep, brothers and sisters. It's real deep. All right. Now, um, let me go to, uh, let me go to another, let me go to another, uh, because what's so important in that movie too, is that they disclose Masons, Masons, you know, they when when Leonardo DiCaprio's character and Robert De Niro's character, because Robert De Niro plays the uncle to Leonardo DiCaprio, he's the one who invites him over to this 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 Indian reservation, right? And he 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 basically you know gets him to you know to be like, okay, well yeah, what, do you, what women do you like? You know, if you pick some women, and because they knew they set it all up, right? And and so he's like, uh, when Leonardo DiCaprio tries to make money on the side by getting some guy to some another Indian to actually um, steal his car and get the insurance money and all that different stuff, his uncle catches wind of it and they go into a Masonic lodge. I can't make this shit up. They go into a Masonic lodge and he paddles this motherfucker. He whips him with a paddle. All right. And even when the Indians go to the doctor or they go to the bank, it's these Masonic symbols. They let you know why is it significant. We're about to pull up an article and show you why this is significant. Why is this significant? Okay. Oh, why is hold on? I got it, brothers and sisters. Yep. Okay, I'm finna show you what article I'm reading from, cause I can't obviously the the volume is cut. So um, basically, I'm just gonna show you the article so that you have it as a resource too as well, because that's our job, right? To make sure that you have this stuff as a resource too. Okay.
So you see that. That article is The Strange History of Masons in America from Politics and History. Okay? Now, uh, I scroll down. It says, Often the subject of conspiracy theories, Masons captured the allegiance of much of the early elite, American elite. Okay? It says, Take out a dollar bill, United States currency, that is. Look at the back on the left side. Granted, as much space as the American Eagle symbol on the right is a seeing eye in a pyramid placed there for no apparent reason. But for those in the know, the eye above the pyramid is a Masonic symbol produced by a secret society which has influenced American history from its beginnings. In Masonic lore, the pyramid symbol is known as a sign of the eye of God watching over humanity. But see, even in this article, see how they take over the idea of the symbols. This is the point that I'm also proving to you in this article. Mind you, this is a double-edged sword in terms of how we build conceptual framework. We're not just looking at this to learn about Masons, but look at the concepts behind it. They're saying that the pyramid is a Masonic symbol. The pyramids is in Egypt, bitch. Them Europeans ain't from Africa. You see, so you gotta you gotta watch this Blanco while he's telling you shit because he's a forked tongue. Man, come on, stop it. Let's continue. The Masons have both been criticized and praised for their influential role in U.S. history. George Washington reached the top level of Masons on August 4th, 1753, securing the leadership of the influential lodge in Alexandria, Virginia. Washington was not only alone among the founding fathers. Some scholars say as many as 21 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Masons. Many historians note that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights both seem to be heavily influenced by the Masonic civil religion, which focuses on freedom, free enterprise and a limited role for the state. In Europe, the Masons were known for plotting against royal governments. In America, they became known for promoting Republican virtues of self-government. Masonic thought influenced American history. The Masons were opposed to the claims of royalty, a strong influence on the development of the American revolt against the British, which culminated in the Revolutionary War, blah, blah, blah. They, okay, so we know that they, 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 you know, sweetening this shit up. Okay, so we're going to get to the meat of this. Okay, now. I'm going to get to the meat of this because this is. All right. Um, all right. So uh, after the anti-Mason backlash grew, abolitionists like John Brown rallied against the often pro-slavery Masons. Prominent figures, including John Quincy Adams, a former president and former Mason and publisher Horace Greeley, joined in the widespread castigation. Future President Miller Fillmore called Masonic orders nothing better than organized treason. In 1832, an anti-Masonic party ran a one-issue candidate for president. He captured Vermont's electoral votes. So why is this important? We have to understand that the first third party of the United States was literally called the anti-Masonic party. That's how, that's how devious they thought these individuals were. The first third party in the United States history was called the anti-Masonic party. Did you know that? Did you know that? So what's the point? Why am I relating that to the movie? Because you also see in the movie, notice the energy now, what's going on with everything and all these conflicts. In the movie, the Indians call Leonardo DiCaprio's character a greedy Jew and a dirty Jew. That's what they call him, a greedy Jew. Okay? So we ain't got to say the rest. We know what's going on, but the point being is that when you see these individuals who, you know, put forth this effort to, you know, characterize themselves as individuals who come and, and you know, as a, as a uh, you know, basically uh, as, 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 as benign individuals, you know what I'm saying? But we know that they are wolf in sheep's clothing. When you see uh, uh, Robert De Niro's character, he's the uncle, he's this rich, powerful mason. This rich, powerful Mason in this movie. And the thing is, like, even when they, you know, the, the uh, Indian tribe started to catch wind that these murders that are happening, some, some's got to be, you know, something's up. The, our people are being exterminated out here, right? So what happens is he even starts to say, oh, yeah, I'll even put up $1,000 or $2,000 so we can catch this killer. And he and Leonardo DiCaprio are doing all the murders. Okay, all along, they're the ones doing this, but then marrying into these people, feigning this allegiance to these people, but killing off their, their, their sisters and brothers and mothers and shit. This shit was crazy. Showed you that they were purely diabolical. Purely diabolical. And, you know, to add insult to injury, the lady was so, it shows you how our people are, are, are conditioned. She, at the end, was still 
was still clinging to hope in some way like you could see it in her face and showing that she loved him that she wanted to all the children are doing well and all this different this man was literally killing you poisoning you with this this insulin that they just came out with that they were extracting from a cow's pancreas okay a uh, 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 cow's pancreas that's where they were extracting this new insulin from because this diabetes was decimating them okay this man blew up helped to blow up your sister house killed your sister and your sister's husband inside the house the explosion was so big that the mattress was found in a tree i can't make this shit up they were still finding her sister body parts when investigators were coming the next day that's how big the explosion was this man participated in killing her family and she still had compassion for him if this ain't if this ain't, I mean, what do they call that? Stockholm Syndrome 101, I don't know what is. If that wasn't Stockholm Syndrome 101, I don't know what is. I'm telling you. Sovereign Energy said, I'm late, but I'm here. Hey, that's what's up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so when we take a look at those things, that, that's one of the things that I wanted to... Uh, you know, uh, do for you guys was exploit that. Now, remember when I told you how I knew that, you know, some people say, oh, you reaching, you know, yeah, they might have shouted out Tulsa in the movie, but what's this connection? How can you make this connection? Oh, we'll just bring up the weight. We'll just bring up the article. We'll just bring up the articles. Okay. Oh, let me make sure. Make sure this is the right one. Okay. I believe this is the one right here because I got a couple of them. When you look up this, when you Google this, it, it'll pop up. Okay. Why doesn't it want to just show the damn? Hold on, brothers and sisters. Hold up. Oh my goodness, now look at this shit tripping. Look at this shit tripping. Come on, man. Y'all, okay. Y'all, let me see what this article says. Let me, let me type this up again. Let me type this up again. I put the date in on your ass. What you talking about? Y'all finna see this. Now this is what this this is what to show you. This is what's gonna show you that this is crazy. Now I'm finna just show you uh um you know the symbolism and stuff too. We're about to see this. Yeah, they did. Um uh, Yazel uh Yazel said six Yazel six eighteen said they went out with the bang with that insult the <laughs> And they, it was so deep how they was trying to hold this, you know, hold it up. So I'm finna show y'all since y'all, y'all can't hear me. Since y'all can't hear me. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I know that the sound goes out when I show it. That's why I don't speak when I when I show y'all the article. I'm just gonna show y'all the article and then I'm gonna go back and read it, all right? But I want y'all to see this article. That way, you know, when it's on the video, you can take your notes, you can screenshot it. You know, you can have these resources available for yourself because this is what this is all about. All right, so let me share my screen so y'all can see the article. You're not gonna be able to hear me. Okay, so you saw that the Oklahoman parallel tragedies, killers of the uh, the flower moon, uh, Tulsa race massacre started three days apart. 
three days apart okay so it says three days later the tulsa race maskers mind you they don't want to associate oil with tulsa Tulsa race massacres began. The two-day riot brought on white supremacists is now considered one of the worst incidents of racial violence in American history. Both sets of tragedies put a spotlight on white people using violence in Oklahoma to seize wealth owned by minority populations. Uh, Oklahoma's oil boom. Osage, Osage gained wealth. Black Wall Street prospered. This is deep. The discovery of oil in Osage Nation's reservation gave the group a key to growing wealth, but oil was also found closer to Tulsa at Glen Pool in 1905. How do we know this? Because we just read the article. We just read the article, so we already know this. So it's going to go on and show you that the FBI, in these articles, is, it talks about how the FBI seen the connection. The FBI seen the connection, but didn't do shit about it. You sent a few people to prison, like but at the end of the movie, it showed you that them guys got out. Got out. They, were some, they were supposed to be given life sentences, and then got out. You see what I'm saying? And look at Oklahoma now. Look at Oklahoma now. Look at our people. So when people talk about Tulsa receiving up reparations and the last living descendants of the, you know, uh, uh, or the people who lived in, in, in Tulsa during that time wanting reparations, they wouldn't be able to even repay you. They know that. They know that. You see what I'm saying? Because I told you guys before that the energy sector is the biggest sector in anybody's economy because if you can't supply energy to businesses, if you don't have energy or can't provide uh, energy to your citizens, then your, your nation is not only in turmoil, it will be in utter uh, in, in, in utter disarray and dysfunction because energy is how you 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 know you're able to not only take care of yourself by having the lights energy and heat and ac and all that different stuff being able to transport yourself to a job to go get food and all that different stuff it's also you know critical to uh you know keeping a nation together all right plain and simple that's why the energy sector is bar none either controlled by the the government or it it, 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 it it puts out this image that uh, companies control it themselves and the government's just back making sure that they do everything right. We know that's how, you know, the United States does it. We know that the government is directly involved in controlling the, the telecommunications industry. So when you go back to even what uh, it talked about in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in that article, when it said that they had telephone lines and stuff like that, you must remember the government now at this point in time leases out the telephone lines to the tele, uh, telecommunications industry or leases. They control the telecommunications industry. Ask anybody that Verizon, all of that. They lease those, those lines of communication from the federal government. Now, side note, sidebar. Do you know that 98% of communication is through underwater sea cables? But if you watch movies again, like with the block and you continue to keep letting them lie, they act like they're communicating via satellites. Look this up. 98% of our communication is through underwater sea cables. Not this sci-fi shit, because the Blanco's not a god. The Blanco cannot master what it is that you have been entitled to master since you got here, because you are a carbon being. That is what you need to know. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, ultimately what we're talking about here, man, is that, you know, in, in a nutshell, and I wish this was able to grow, you know, the, to flow smoothly and stuff, because... This was the most important thing, uh, you know, I, I wanted to get these ideas out here. Uh, you know, I thought it was extremely important for us to understand those things, because when you're dealing with someone who who does these things, people always ask me, OK, it says like, oh, man, you know, seem like you're divisive. And I always say this because I want to get this point clear. I want to make it clear. Like people really think that I'm at somebody's throat or head simply because I, I, I just ain't got nothing else to do or better to do. I tell people when you become when you understand the science and then you actually understand you know how coordinated these efforts have been you know and that the timing was critical you see what i'm saying that you begin to realize like these people are ultimately nefarious in this re uh, regard listen i'm gonna show you something else i gotta show you something else too because it's one movie if you haven't seen this i don't know how many of you guys have seen uh rabbit proof fence put ones in the chat if any of you people have seen if any of you brothers and sisters have seen the rabbit proof fence all right Rabbit proof fence, okay? Let's see what comes up. Mm. 
Okay. So yeah, I'm just gonna show my screen right quick just to show y'all exactly what the resource is, and then uh, obviously I'm a um you know uh, you know offer up my commentary. So I'm gonna show y'all this article right quick just so you know what the resource is. Okay. Okay, so that's the rabbit proof fence. This is based on a true story. They, uh, these articles uh, are, you know, from a site called Based on a True Story. And this is called Rabbit Proof Fence. Um, it says that, uh, and this is a transcript, part of the transcript. This transcript is automatically generated. There will be mistakes, so please don't use them for quotes. It is provided for reference use to find things better in the audio. So you can't, you know, use all these quotes, but what you can use for quotes is what they put in quotation marks, okay? In 1927, Dr. Cecil Cook said, quote, everything necessary must be done to convert the half caste into a white citizen. OK, the term half caste was used during Dr. Cecil's time for the mixed race people in Australia, more specifically those with one aboriginal parent and one white parent. In most cases, the white parent was a father who had children outside of marriage, often by way of what amounted to rape. As with all too often in the early 20th century, the white government saw other races as subpar to their own. As you can probably understand, the term is considered quite offensive for many people today. So I'm going to avoid using them from here on out. Now, this is so deep. You always got to hear. You always got to understand that these Blanco always be spitting that mayonnaise because if we were inferior, why would you want to breed with us? If we were inferior, why would you want to breed with us? Dr. Umaron, if we were inferior, why would you want to breed with us? We know that Australia is the site of the number one place of skin cancer. Australia is the number one location for skin cancer, right? But they know what they did. The, the, the grind is more, more important than anything to get that bloodline. Remind you, according to Blanco data or Blanco research or documents, remember, as I showed you, I showed you the article for this. When they came upon the Aborigines, this was their first time coming in contact with what they call golden blood, the rarest blood on earth. The rarest blood on earth. And if you notice in this movie too, that we're talking about killers of the flower moon, they talk about how, oh, they're full blooded. They're this, that, and the other. Now, this was so deep. Let's end on this, you know, to, uh, to uh, and I, this is very powerful. They came there and killed them with this disease called diabetes, which if you notice is the number one metabolic illness on the earth. Diabetes is the number one metabolic illness on this so-called planet, right? So when they were burying their dead, they would put an apple Two apples or apple on top of the casket. This will so, and I caught that symbolism deep because remember when we talk about sugar, sugars are hormones, this natural energy given to them by the sun, right? In crystal formation. All right, we, we've expounded on that many times over, right? So they, they they literally died like symbolically. Symbolically, they were telling you that we literally had given away our connection to Mother Earth. We literally had given away what makes our bloodline so elite, which is the taking in of natural sugars or natural crystals. All right. Which is the taking in of natural crystals, because we already substantiated to you that you have to know that glucose is a crystal. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let me go to let me go to this right quick. I got to show you guys this. I got to show you guys this. You want to know what vitamin D looks like vitamin D are literally colorless crystals. They color them for this. And you have two types of vitamin D one called ergociferol and one is called cold, cold ciferol, right? Cold ciferol is vitamin D three. Ergociferol is vitamin D two. Vitamin D two comes from plants. Vitamin D three comes from the sun directly from the sun to us. It interacts with our cholesterol in our skin, transforms it to vitamin D three. Vitamin D three is responsible for doing what? Making sure that we're able to utilize calcium, magnesium, manganese, these metals, because you must remember that calcium is a metal in the periodic table of elements. Let's move on. Let's show you exactly what calcium or, or vitamin D three looks like. Remember, it is a crystal. Here you go, brothers and sisters. See, I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. See, if I wasn't going to show, if we didn't provide the evidence, if we didn't let you know that when we call ourselves the Christologians, that that's not a name that we made up, that's the name that the Europeans gave us, then everybody would think we off here rambling off on pseudoscience. 
Everybody would think we out here making stuff up. And nothing could be further from the truth. When I was on Sister channel, which they, they took that video down because she showed the crystals. They're called selenite crystals. You can look this up. S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E. S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E. -E -E. They're these huge, massive crystals. Huge, massive crystals, right? And it was so hot in there that the humidity was so high that, you know, when humidity is high, you can't release the water in your body because water holds heat. How you cool down, how the brain cools down is by sweating. It'll trap the heat in the water and that's why you sweat. But if it's so hot and you can't release the water, you'll literally collapse and die. Not being able to release that heat because the brain will overheat. Okay? The brain will overheat. All right? So they literally had to take, NASA had to literally take, uh, NASA had to literally take, you know, them put themselves in these suits, modify themselves. But imagine if the crystal logos were in there. This is one of the primary reasons why I tell us, brothers and sisters, that we got to get our, our children, we got to get ourselves scientifically inclined. Because what if we were those geologists, those archaeologists, etc.? We would be able to be in, and experience these things firsthand. Because we know that by virtue of us not being interested in it, one, and that by virtue of them also not, you know, making sure that we are not able to get into these areas, you know, in significant numbers, we don't have access to the very things that can help also influence us in, in, in different ways, right? That's why I think for the most part it is about us tapping into self and encourage us to tap into self more. But let's just think critically for a second how much we will be able to turn that new turn over that new leaf if we're able to have access to these energy sources. OK, but the first way we do that is understanding what these energy sources are. Vitamin D3 or vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a hormone. Look that up. Vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a hormone and it is also a crystal. But like we said before, and I've said this many times, if they put hormone D in your milk or hormone D on the package of your orange juice or hormone D on anything else that you were eating, you might not eat it. You might not eat it. So they understood that. Remember, we said that the primary responsibility of a crystal or sugar is to bond with other crystals. Hence, you have glucose, glucose. That's maltose. That's what they make beer out of. You have glucose and fructose. That's called sucrose, right? That's your table sugar from the man's synthetic form. But that's also natural sugars and vegetables and fruits. You have glucose and galactose. That makes lactose. That's the mother's milk. Sugar comes together, makes these crystals. These crystals act as hormones. And these hormones are what builds you and gets you to the level of puberty, which in turn after that level is supposed to be the level of the highest uh, or the highest level of illumination which is the enlightenment we search for now all right that's what you need to know this is deep stuff brothers and sisters i should call you crystallogens so my crystallogens i say all that to say this that when you take a look at these movies, now that you know that the old sage were given that land, they so they 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 purchased that land from the so-called Creek Indians, who the so-called Seminoles are also you know uh, lumped into that category. They bought that land from them. They stayed 20 miles away from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and just so happened that these 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 massacres were three days apart. But they compartmentalize that history by letting you know, oh, the old sage they were rich. Oh, they had all this money and power. But Tulsa, Oklahoma, that was a race massacre. That had nothing to do with the oil. Oh, they just so happen to be called the oil capital of the world. That their sports teams is how they continuously replay these rituals. That the vast majority of these states still have their Indian names. Still have their Indian names. And if the Blanco, you know the Blanco knows about ownership because the big part of ownership is whose name is it? If you got a house, how you determine ownership is if your name is on the deed. You see what I'm saying? So if this Blanco owns the United States, why didn't he change the names? Why didn't he change the names of the states? Because he knows that his energy through his, the, you know, the blood that he shed. He's an energy vampire. Not just with plasma, but the emotional energy that we release. Because when you release emotional energy, what is emotions? Hormones. What are hormones? Crystals. I am killing you niggas. Okay? So, you know, I hope you guys, I wanted to get that out. Um, yeah, I'm going to put my cash app is, is, is actually, because listen, listen, you guys, listen. I know before I leave, what I want y'all to do, I just got, you know, two of the intros done. 
uh, which is be our logo intro for the FOS squad. Shouts out to the FOS squad, right? And we also have the outro done. So I want you guys to stay to take a look at that because remember I told you that the primary way that we take back ourselves is by not waiting on the Blanco to teach us about ourselves, right? Teach us about our history. We have to condition uh, ourselves, in, in, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to be in a belief or to be under the... Uh, uh, you, you know, be under the thought process or be involved with the thought process that it's us who have to give these images to our children and to ourselves. We have to recapture our identity. No longer should we be sitting around here be, uh, debating with Blancos about who the Egyptians, the Omex, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas, all these different, et cetera, et cetera. We ain't got to debate with them. We know the truth. Why are you sitting up here talking and debating with a liar? That everything, like me and Ob say, the only time they're not lying is when they're eating and drinking. Okay. You're dealing with the father of the lie. They can't wait to lie. You see what I'm saying? So we shouldn't even be waiting on that. We shouldn't even be trying to convince them we, we were the Egyptians. We should be convincing them by becoming the Egyptians. We shouldn't be trying to convince them that we were the Omex. We should convince them by becoming the Omex. And so one way we do that is, like I said, we recapture that. My, my cash app is going to be in the end of the, you know, the second video. But you guys stay tuned for this second, uh, you know, for this outro. Because I had you guys in mind that we're going to be a powerhouse. Sorry for the delays and the, the volume. YouTube had sent me a strike with the, you know, the, the, the photo that I had. And that they are a plague. You, that's why I couldn't go live. So I had to wait. They had to wait. I couldn't stream. They wouldn't allow me to stream for 45 minutes or an hour or however long that was. So that's what that was all about. So then... After I found out I could stream, that and they were allow, you know what I'm saying, uh, through my streaming service, not just through the camera. After I was allowed to stream, then that's when you, you know, we was up and rolling, we was up and rocking. So I mean, they, 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 they didn't, you know, totally mess this up, but we could have done without, we could have done uh, uh, without all of the hangups and all of the interruptions and stuff like that. But I appreciate you guys, you, you brothers and sisters, you crystal just for hanging around, staying locked and loaded and stuff, um, because this is extremely important information. Um, but I wanted just to lay the groundwork with this. I wanted to let you know how important this stuff was, especially when we're talking about these crystals, right? Being the crystallogens. They knew that. They mastered that. These people, they say that the Osage primarily dealt with maize or corn. Reminds you that they make their crystals, a lot of their sugars from corn, high fructose corn syrup, dextrose. What they would give you in the hospital is an artificial form of glucose, okay? To mimic glucose. Their beer are two glucose molecules put together called maltose. That's why people are extremely addicted. That's why the Indians got addicted to the liquor. We all heard about Indians drinking like a fish or drinking like an Indian, right? Because they began to be addicted to the glucose because they wasn't getting it from any other source. Like I told you, this Blanco was sitting around running around like he just met those Indians. Like that was the first time he ran into them. No, we know from historical documents, you guys was interacting with our, the indigenous people in the 15 and 1600s. Okay? You indoctrinated them with your religion and then your food. And your institutions. That's why you see her so high strong on this Blanco. And she couldn't separate herself from him. She had Stockholm Syndrome to, to, with nuclear power activation. She was just all wrapped up into this Blanco. Even though she knew that this Blanco, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, was responsible for killing her sister and her grandma and everybody else around her. And that's deep to me. But that's, that's not too far from how niggas think, right? How many times have they bombed our churches? Kill us in mass. And we sit back and we're like, ah, you know, maybe he'll change. He'll get it together. The Blanco will get it together. You see what I'm saying? So with that being said, you know what we like to end it with, right? We like to end it with this, which is, who is God? God is the judge. And why is she the judge? Because she decides who wins and loses, not my opponent. Who is my opponent? He doesn't exist. And why does he not exist? Because he is merely a dissenting voice to the truth I speak. Brothers and sisters, Christologians, speak the truth and stay tuned for this amazing outro. And like you said, if you guys want to donate to, you know, to keep the FOF squad going, trust me, all this money really does go back into the channel. You see, I invest in myself too. So obviously we're not playing around with this. And our job is to make sure that we invest in each other to get this going. We're going to have some book giveaways and stuff like that. So, uh, and then we also gonna have a special guest in a couple of days. I'm gonna let you guys know about who that special guest is shortly, uh, you know, in the post and, you know, in the near future, but, uh, we're going to be doing some book giveaways. We're going to do some exciting stuff. We're going to have, uh, um, not like open mic night, but it's going to be like slam poetry. 
Okay, so this stuff is going to get, it's going to be live, brothers and sisters. We're about to have a real good time. We're going to expand and let's grow this channel. Let's grow this movement and, and, and reach out to our spiritual brothers and sisters. With that being said, salute Christologians. Falling stars in the sky No more 